I'm assuming most of you are coming to this video after watching the main video. This video is meant to dig a little deeper into how the actual implementation of the FFT works. To give a super quick recap of the main ideas of the first video, we motivated the idea of the FFT through polynomial multiplication. The key idea there is that polynomial multiplication is much faster when we use a point value representation of polynomials. But the question that we had to immediately address is how do we convert polynomials from a coefficient representation to a value representation? This conversion was the fast Fourier transform where if we pick our set of evaluation points to be the roots of unity, we formulate a beautiful recursive algorithm to evaluate polynomials in just O of n log n time. This was the implementation for that algorithm. So I'm going to be honest, when I first learned the FFT in a college algorithm class and saw this implementation, this is basically in a nutshell what happened. No matter how hard you try to understand everything up to this point, I feel like most people will be like me and get lost in the details. Whenever you are lost, one of the most helpful things you can do is completely break down a specific example. Let's do just that. Suppose I provide the following input to the FFT function, which represents a degree 3 polynomial. We first define n is equal to 4. This does not meet the base case criteria, so we proceed to define omega as e to the power of 2 pi i over 4, which is equivalent to the complex number i. What this means for us is that this will make sure that the roots of unity that we evaluate the polynomial at are the fourth roots of unity, which correspond to the following points on the unit circle. We then define PE as the even degree terms of 5 and 2, which makes PE the linear function 5 plus 2x. PO is similarly defined with odd degree terms of 3 and 1, which makes it another linear function 3 plus x. We now make two recursive calls to the FFT functions with these linear functions as inputs. Let's see what happens in the recursive call on the even degree terms. Here we define n to be 2 and then define omega as e to the power of 2 pi i over 2, which is equivalent to negative 1, meaning that the polynomial will be evaluated at the second roots of unity or the following points on the unit circle. We then proceed with another split of the polynomial into even and odd degree terms, both of which are now just constants. We pass these zero degree polynomials into two more recursive calls. Both of these recursive calls end up hitting the base case and returning whatever input was just passed in. The outputs of these recursive calls are then assigned to the variables ye and yo. We can now proceed to define our output y for this call, which is initially a two element list of zeros. We proceed into our for loop of which the first line assigns the 0th index of y to be the 0th index of ye plus omega to the power of 0 multiplied by the 0th index of yo. This is essentially the evaluation step required for the root of unity number 1, which is omega to the power of 0. This expression ends up being 7, which updates the y list accordingly. Proceeding to the second line of the for loop, we assign the first index of the y list to be the 0th index of ye minus omega to the power of 0 multiplied by the 0th index of yo. This corresponds to the evaluation step for root of unity number 2, which is omega to the power of 1 and the negative pair of our first root of unity. The value of this expression is 3, which is then updated in the list. We now return this value. After finishing the recursive call on the even degree terms, we proceed to do the same process on the recursive call on the odd degree terms. The logic is exactly the same, but with a different input, so I'll let you just follow along with the animations at your own pace. Now on to the key step. 
After we get the return values of the recursive calls on the even and odd degree term polynomials, this is then assigned to the ye and yo variables in our current call. Now when we define our whitelist, it has four values, all of which are initially zero. We then proceed into the for loop. In the first iteration, the first line assigns the zeroth index of y to the zeroth index of ye plus omega to the power of zero times the zeroth index of yo. This is essentially evaluating the original polynomial at the first root of unity omega to the power of zero, and the expression gives us the value 11. Proceeding now to the second line of the for loop in our first iteration, we now want to assign the second index of y to the zeroth index of ye minus omega to the power of zero multiplied by the zeroth index of yo. This is now evaluating the third root of unity omega squared, which is the negative pair of the first root of unity. The value of this expression is 3, which is now the second index of our output y list. Now we go to the second iteration of the for loop, which starts by assigning the first index of y to be the first index of ye plus omega to the power of 1 times index 1 of yo. This corresponds to valuing the second root of unity in our unit circle, which is just omega to the power of 1. The value of this expression is the complex number 3 plus 2i, which now is the index 1 of our output list. In the second line of the for loop, we now assign the third index of y to be the first index of ye minus omega to the power of 1 times index 1 of yo, which evaluates the final root of unity. When evaluated, this ends up being the complex number 3 minus 2i, which is the final element in our output list y. We now have the final output of the FFT on our original degree 3 polynomial. As a final sanity check, it's good to actually try evaluate the polynomial on the fourth root of unity and check that the values we get do match the ones calculated by the FFT. If you do this exercise, you will see that they do indeed match. That's all for this video and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please hit the like button so that this content will be recommended to more people. If you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to more directly support the work of this channel, please check out the Patreon page linked in the description below. I'll see you all in the next video.